Good morning, my friends. All right, <clears throat> just came back from the world's slowest three-mile jog and uh, hopped on a bike, did some shopping. Got a few more things to do today, and one of them is I want to talk to y'all. And the other one is I want to see if I can get some Taolu done. Taolu is Chinese for kata, right, the forms. Um, forms factor a little bit into this conversation. This conversation is for some of the older guys that are still active, still fit, and they're starting to feel the wear and tear on the joints. And, you know, doing your forms is one way to maintain um, joint integrity, flexibility, and motion. And if you never did it, uh, it's, it's kind of funny how during the pandemic, the solo training started to become uh, fashionable. And even MMA people were thinking of different ways to make sort of in-the-air versions of takedowns and grappling and stuff. So, um, you know... Some of you out there, some of my, my friends and some of you subscribers and some of you casual watchers um, are older and you're you're doing a good job of staying active. But um, psychologically, there's this thing that happens, all right? You get a little older, the joints wear out, and you feel like you're doing something wrong if you do like maybe less mileage or less heavy weights or less bag work, right? You feel like, oh, I'm, this is just proof that I'm getting old and I'm losing it. And I can hear it in some of your voices, right? Where, where you talk about this and you're like, oh, it's inevitable. Um, sooner or later, I'm not going to be able to do this. Guys, whoa, whoa. snap out of it. Snap out of it. Let, let's, let's talk about a couple options. So one option is, and this is for bag work. Let's focus on bag work versus bob work. All right. We've got the bag and some of you like to pound away on it for rounds and rounds. And, you know, whether you're 50 or 40 or 60 or 35 or 80 or whatever you are, I mean, you know, <clears throat> you want to do the same amount of rounds and the same intensity as when you're younger. And when you can't uh, or when you can, but you start to pay a price for it the next day in terms of pain and soreness and recovery you it, this depresses you and the depression causes you to release cortisol which is not doing you any good right but first of all just reconsider sometimes the best way to serve something unpalatable is to serve it a different way put it on a different plate put some different spices on it so for example let's say you're used to 10 rounds on the bag you know who i'm talking to right you're used to 10 rounds on the bag um, they do six rounds on the on the bob or the wave master. The wave master is a lot like the bag, but it has less resistance, right? It also gives you a little more flexibility in doing low kicks. the The wave master is less punishing to hands, elbows, wrists, and shoulders, and ankles and knees. It gives you enough resistance, but not too much. Uh, the bob. Again, gives you resistance. It doesn't give you the type of resistance that a heavy bag does. But let's think about something for a second, all right? The heavy bag doesn't give you anything like a the targets on a human being, right? So you're actually gaining something with a bob. Now, this means that you can maybe maintain the same amount of rounds or just reduce them a little bit and still get good cardio value, get good form and technique on your punches and kicks, your elbows, your knees, your maneuvers, your repositioning. But you also get to add things like palm strikes, eye, eye pokes, flicks, four knuckle strikes, um, dragon fist and phoenix knuckle strikes that you can't, you know, don't quite work well on the bag. They're not quite logical on the bag, right? You can even work headbutts. You can work shoulder checks, hip checks, forearm smashes. Um, all, all the things that are part of the traditional martial arts that many of you practice or practiced and work that you can't really use on the bag or the focus mitts. Most boxing and kickboxing trained focus mitt guys won't let you do those strikes. They're like, that's stupid. Why are you wasting your time? But if you made it to my age, I'm 52, right? Um, you're not getting in the ring to compete. You're not getting in the cage to compete. I mean, I... I would want an equally aged, equally decrepit, equally injured person and a $3 million fee for just showing up to take that amount of risk. You understand? Right? I train for health, for fun, to maintain my ability so that when I teach, I can demonstrate. I, I can spar lightly with some of the younger students, right? 
but but I know where my limitations are. But I know I love this stuff and I want to keep doing it. That's the grand prize. Now, here's another thing. Uh, we talked about Makawara training and, and impact training or what happens if I lose some of the power and strength in my hands. First of all, some of us have been around a while. We know that power and strength doesn't come from the hands. It comes from the body dynamics, the mechanics, rotation of the hip, settling of the weight, the forward momentum, sometimes an inclination, sometimes a whip. That's where the power comes from. So same thing with a heavy bag. If you've been doing martial arts for eight years or more, and for some of you it's 18, 28, 38 years, right? Uh, you're not going to lose those body mechanics unless your body cannot do the mechanics anymore. And so excessive training on hard impact targets, things like the Makawara, right? Um, that's what will stop you from hitting hard if you overdo it, get injured, and can't recover. Right? Strength training, especially weights, um, that will maintain bone density and strength, right? Um, another thing you might consider is hitting the bob or the wave master without gloves. You get some toughening of the hands, but it's a more yielding surface, a lot like human flesh, but not human bone. And so you'll, you know, be able to maintain some of the toughness of the skin, but not keep injuring yourself. And you can always top off with a few rounds on the heavy bag afterwards. Just, you know, say instead of 10 rounds on a heavy bag, you did six rounds on Bob and another two or three or one on the bag, and someone mentioned, yes, you could just do an extended round, like six minutes or, or nine minutes or whatever, whatever you want to do. Now let's talk about a philosophical thing. Okay, when it comes to training the bag or the wave master versus the bob, you may notice that when you're training the wave master, you can't blast it super hard because you actually start moving the wave master, and you're like, well, I got to cut back on my power. But we already mentioned power comes from the form and the body mechanics that you perfected over decades. That's not going to go away except by you injuring yourself. So, yeah, maybe you titrate, you control, you you quick it up and back and practice fluidity and speed rather than full power blasting, right? But that's going to improve your cardio. Now, what about the bob? What if you just really missed the heavy bag and you're like, ah, oh, I feel like I can't get my full power. I feel like, all right, let's nip that in the bud for a second. Do you believe in your martial arts? I believe in the traditional martial arts because I've had moments, even when I was a kid, where I used the knife hand or a traditional strike or sweep and I, like magic, it worked. I injured a bigger, taller opponent almost by accident in class and a couple times in real life. Right? I know the knife hand works because I knife handed someone, knocked the wind straight out of it. Coming in, right? I <laughs> I know the tiger claw works because I've tiger clawed people in the in the groin and throat. I've pressure pointed people here and dropped them to their knees. Big strong athletic guys, right? I know these things work. And what I figured out is it's all about being able to reflex, reflexively and automatically hit the right targets at the right angle with the right weapons. And heavy bag doesn't give you that. All right. But here's another thing. You know, we, we have a lot of stories in the martial art of um, old masters, 60s, 70s, whatever, um, using finesse and using uh, targeting, using some esoteric techniques using timing, using balance and unbalancing um, to subdue younger, stronger, faster opponents. And we, you know, that's one of the holy grails that we believe in. Well, you don't get that way by trying to continue to hit like a meat-headed, strong young man into your 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and so on. You get it by actually working the finesse skills, right? See this? This flick, that flick to the eye can... Uh, never been flicked in the eye or accidentally flick someone in the eye, all right? You'll, it shuts up, it begins to swell. That's not a strength technique. That's an accuracy angle finesse technique. That's a timing thing, right? And the bob gears your mind towards training that way rather than gears your mind towards trying to continue to 
get like a young, strong, athletic competitor into your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 200s, whatever. The advances in medicine get better. We, you know, hopefully we'll live longer, healthier, happier lives, right? And the way we get there is by being uninjured and healthy, by being able to maintain our cardio and our strength and so on and so forth, right? So I think the Bob, you want to be that mysterious old man who can who can drop someone with a finger, who can evade a punch of a bigger, stronger person, a faster person, by being able to sense what's happening and then sweeping his leg and then coming down and, and you know, immobilizing him with the technique. You want to be that finesseful, masterful person that we, that we repeat these legends about. And guess what? Some of them are quite real. I've seen things. I've had things done to me, and I've been able to do a few things, right? My goal is to be as efficient as possible for as long as possible, to live long, prosper, to be safe, and to walk as a warrior all my days, right? But the type of warrior you are changes with time. You know, for example, me and my friend Jose Gonzalez, we talk about, you know, some of the techniques that are disappearing in the martial arts, the open hand techniques, the multi-range combat, right? Uh, some of the dirty techniques, the integration of boxing with traditional kicking, with knees, with palm strikes, all these things. And a lot of younger generation people don't believe it exists, don't believe it can work, but we have seen it work. We've worked it ourselves sometimes. Well, if you believe in that, also believe in some of the deeper aspects of your art, hidden within the art, that are waiting for you to shed one skin and now move into this higher level of not having to rely on your strength and your cardio and so on and so forth. Yes, um, I've always said my, my goal as a martial artist and as a person is to develop so much strength, as, as much strength as possible, that that alone would be enough. To develop enough endurance as possible, that that alone would be enough. But to find a way to, to need it less and less and less, to just have it as a reserve. And then to develop your social connections to help the people around you to provide so much value to your community that if someone were to attack you, old women and children would run across the street to stand between you and that attacker, right? So that you wouldn't need your strength or your skill. And all same thing with skill. I want to develop so much skill that my strength and my cardio are not, that I could just use the skill, right? You want to treat them all as important areas, but you don't want to rely on one. And realize that time takes some things, but it gives you others, right? I, I, I sound like I'm doing a paid advertisement for the Bob. I'm sure there are other targets out there, right? But um, I would love an anatomical target that allowed you to practice knee strikes and groin shots. I think the, the Karate Connection people were gave instructions for how to build one, and they were selling one for a while, but it was called the Ultraman. But I don't know if there was much of a market for it. Right, But these types of things are training tools that allow us to maintain our ability, our fitness, our skill, but also maintain our joints. And as we train, as we get older, we should try to move into the higher aspects of martial art where power is not as important as timing and leverage. Speed is not as important as timing and balance, you know, where... Speed, power, explosiveness, physicality, we want to maintain that as much as possible within the idea that if we over-pursue it and overdo it, we can lose it by injuring our body. We want to emphasize balance, speed, tactile sensitivity, visual ability to spot things coming. If your reflexes get slower, maybe you find a way to fight at, at a right distance and make the person come to you. And so you manage that distance better. You manage uh, distance control, right? You learn how to leverage people like Hoyce Gracie in UFC 1 when he was taking these much bigger guys down, right? At the time, no one had a defense for it. And a lot of that was because contemporary martial arts had moved more towards point karate and, and maybe Olympic taekwondo. And, and, you know, they were specializing in one or two aspects of, of combat. 
And, you know, the Gracies found a format where, where grappling would reign supreme. It was designed to facilitate grappling. They did handpick some opponents, but there was a lot of weaknesses that he was able to exploit, right? Same thing with timing, same thing with striking. Look at the finesse of, of Tai Chi people. Uh, I had a Tai Chi instructor, Guy DeRosa, in, in New Jersey, who the minute he touched hands with you, you could try, I tried double leg takedowns, I tried kicks to the face, and he could sense what was coming and unbalance me before I could get any of it off, right? That was incredible. He was about 50 at the time. And, you know, I was I was in my late 20s. I was a young, younger, stronger man. So all of you, embrace the Bob. Embrace the Wave Master. Embrace the Ultraman. Embrace finesse training. Embrace sensitivity training, as in tactile combat sensitivity, right? Embrace the use of target focus training like the TRT people do and, and the Kung Fu Sansu people do, right? Embrace the use of selective partner drills. Develop into that mysterious, masterful old man who can overcome strength with apparent weakness. That is what the high levels of martial art are all about. Thank you.